Have you noticed anything unusual about modern photography? Look, you might want to sit down for this one. Everything is boring. The major companies are competing against each other for minor improvements in clarity. Now, that's not to say that eye tracking focus isn't useful, but I don't think it's as important as what you think it is. And now, with the introduction of machine learning, or AI, everything is being done for us. And we are just letting that happen. And what that's leading to is the homogenization of art. It's no wonder people are going back to film, where everything old is new again. There is so much to love about film, but if I'm being honest with myself, I never really understood it until recently. I had not considered the process of how that image is recorded on film. And really, all I cared about was the image itself. As long as I got a good image, I was happy. But I didn't understand why sometimes I got a good one and sometimes why it didn't work. And now it's just too expensive. The average roll of film costs between $40 and $50 just to purchase and develop it. 10 rolls of film is four to five hundred dollars. And if you're shooting one roll of film a week, that's 50 rolls of film. And for 50 rolls of film a year, I could go on a decent holiday. And this is where a product like Dehancer Pro comes in, which only realistically costs the price of 15 to 20 rolls of film. Now, for full transparency, Dehancer Pro did reach out to me and ask for a review of their software. But, the opinions expressed here are entirely my own. In fact, they welcome any negative comments because they are continually improving their product. If you do like what you see and want to give it a go yourself, there is a trial version on their website. And then if you wish to proceed to a purchase, use the code Pete Mellows for a 10% discount off any of the subscription models or for the lifetime license. Now, I wouldn't call this a review. It's more of a walk through some of the more notable features. And I've added some bookmarks in the video so that you can jump back and forth as you need to. Uh, and there's also a bonus in the middle somewhere. Just keep an eye out for that one. When you first install Dehancer Pro, you're given an option between a Photoshop or a Lightroom plugin. Now the Lightroom plugin is a standalone app and that works with software such as Capture One Pro or uh, Affinity Photo. Now, even if you don't have those applications, you can load a file directly into Dehancer Pro. So let's have a look at it in action. I've got some images here from my trip to Japan, and I think some of these will work really well because it's got that old world feel, and I think the, the film emulation will work really well with that. We're gonna start with this castle up here. Now Dehancer Pro suggests that we work with a raw image and not something that's already processed. So what we'll do is we'll just clone that variant in Capture One and then reset everything back to square one. Now they do suggest that you work with the more extreme changes that you need to do like dealing with your exposure levels. And so I like to pull that up just a little bit and I'll put the exposure warning on. So I'll pull that back just a little bit with my exposure. You can see up here with my RGB values that they are within range and they're not completely clipped out, which is really important for jumping into film emulation. So I'll turn that exposure warning off and then right click on that image, edit with Dehancer Lightroom plugin. You just hit edit variant and that will bring up to Hansel Pro. And you'll notice here on the left hand side, you've got a whole range of different film emulations and you can see previews in there straight away. So you can go through, pick out the one you think will work the best. And if I look for Velvia, which is one of the old favorites, if you can't find it here, because it is quite a long list, you can, if you click that on, you can look in the film profiles and just work your way down. And here we go, Fujicom Velvia 100. 
you can see straight away it's made a difference. It does have a little blue cast and if I go Velvia 50 you'll see that changes to a purple cast which may even be a better option for us. Down the bottom here you've got your histogram and you can see here that the, um, the top end of the histogram is quite a way off from the clipping. So what we're going to do is try and push that out a little bit without doing too much damage to the bottom end. Quite happy with the way that looks right now. The colours are nice and it's got a, a really nice feel to it. We head over to the tools on the right hand side. First thing that Dehancer Pro suggests you do is work on the expand tool. Now the expand is just setting your basic black and white points. So if we turn on the clipping mask and push that black point up until those blacks start to clip out. And you can see down the bottom on the histogram where that lies. So what I'd like to do is just pull it in just a little bit to give us a little bit of leeway later on. And the same with the white point. We push that in the over quite a bit too far. It's tricky. The controls here are not very good as far as fine work goes. If you really want to get down to the nth degree, you need to highlight the text here and type in your 102 just for that minute change. So once you've hit the expand, you go into the source and this is where you push your exposure compensation so you can get the light levels that you're after. So you can push that right out if you want to. Um, it's probably a bit extreme. My concern with this image is up here where you can see the roof is kind of struggling to maintain. We pull that down. So you can see here the, the roof's kind of blown out a little bit. If we pull that exposure compensation back just a smidge, not too far. This spike here has disappeared just a little. So what we'll do is go minus one which is way too far, okay. So we go minus 0.1, and you can just see the edges here, which is all we really need, especially when you zoom out. It's not overly important to see this detail, but you can tell when it's been blown out uh, by the white around it. So once you've set that, you can set your temperature compensation and your tint, so this is your basic white balance and if you haven't set it in your editing software then this is where you would do it. Um, but what I don't like here is that you can't really tell. You don't have the values of what this white area should be. And so you really have to do it purely by sight. And we go into our film developer which is quite an important part of the process where we set the contrast and the gamma. So if you push that contrast up, just gives that little bit more definition and it's really bringing the colours out in the wood here and in the green of the trees. But we do want that a little brighter in the shadow, so we'll push that gamma correction up a little as well. And you can see that's not really affecting the highlights. Not really worried about colour separation, but the colour boost, if you choose to do so, pushes up that saturation a little. And if we compare that to without the adjustments, you can see that it's just given that a uh, little bit of a richer flavour to the image. So now we're going to get into the film itself. And we all know that a good piece of film has film grain in it. So what I'll do is zoom in now on the film grain, you can choose between uh, different film types or film sizes. This is a bit like your sensor size, but with the film, there's uh, eight millimeter, 16, 35, and 65. Uh, unless you want really heavy grain, I would stay away from this area. And your 65 is like your medium format film. 
and you'll see there's a, a small range of different ISOs. Now once you've chosen your film type, you then choose custom and it will use these basic settings before you go into doing your finer adjustments. Now for the most part you can leave these alone. I like to choose first up whether it's positive or negative film and this will impact your look significantly as you can see. So with a negative film your highlights are the noisy areas and the shadows are less noisy whereas in positive film it's the opposite. So I like to work in positive and, and I guess that's because with digital it's the lighter areas have less noise and the darker areas have high noise. And from here you can then choose some basic changes. We'll have a look at the image as a whole and when we compare the finished image to the original you can see there is quite a change um, and you can go back and do some minor adjustments after that. To finish up just hit the OK button and then we're back in Capture One and here is our finished image. So I'll compare that to my original edit and you can see while this one's nice this one has that nostalgic feel to it. And these images on their own are perfectly fine. Um, I'm happy with both of them. I'm happy with the way the, uh, the edges here are still there. Uh, you'll notice in, in the film emulated image, the Dehancer Pro image, you can see that we've lost some of the resolution there, um, but that's all part of the film process, isn't it? Next up, I want to look at a black and white image because like I said before, I really like my Ilford film. Uh, create a new variant from that, uh, clone the variant, and then reset. And we'll push that exposure up. You can see on the histogram here, we're almost at the end there. So we'll just jump back in, we'll edit with Dehancer Lightroom plugin. So again, we'll reset and then we'll go looking for this film profile in here. If we go into film types, choose black and white. And if I go, I think this one, the XP2 Super, only because it's more true black and white than the HP5 Plus 400. It's got a bit of a sepia tone to it, which is okay but I like this one more. So we'll just turn that clipping off. We'll go into our expand as before. This hurts my head because if you push the white point up, what it does is it pulls the white point this way. So I'm pushing the slider to the right and the histogram's going to the left. And what I wanna do is pull the slider to the left so the histogram goes to the right. Oops. And again, those fine movements just aren't possible. And yeah, and the same with the black point. If I push the black point to the left, the histogram goes to the right. It's so counterintuitive. So that's a good spot. I'm not concerned about the clipping on the text here we zoom in you can see it's just a, it's a little bit it's not to worry about because it's like it's more gray when you look at it as a whole film developer we can maybe give this a contrast boost I do like the way it's um, pulled the details out through here though so even though this is clipped here I'll go back into my expand tool and push that up a little bit so it comes back in. And there we go. Now from there, what I'd like to talk about is the bloom. So the bloom is where the light from the lens disperses out. It's kind of, it's kind of like a diffuse um, diffraction. 
So the light's pushed out and it's got this glow. Um, in modern terms, if you put a black mist filter on your lens, it has the same effect. So it gets all of the bright parts of light and spreads it out just a little bit so that it, it has this glow around the darker edges. And to highlight that, probably this area, in fact, this area for sure, I'll pull that into one to one. And when I turn it on, just have a look at this area here. So here's the bloom. You can see straight away, there's just this slight glow there. It's even pulled this detail up on the edge and given just a little bit on that shape. I'll turn it off and on again. Now, just like the film grain, you've got different sized film settings. And again, I'm happy with 35, but I will go into my custom settings because this is where it gets really interesting. Before you even look at any of these options, you want to hit the mask mode. And this gives you an accurate picture of where the glow is happening or the bloom. So all along the edges of these uh, objects, even the text here, Then we'll turn the mask mode off. If you turn that off and on, you can see what the effects have been. So it's not overly strong, but it's enough to give that look of film. Push out to the full view. Again, turn it off and on again. It's much more subtle and less pronounced than halation. Uh, which is something that I'll talk about on the next image. I'll probably just throw some film grain in for the moment, maybe 35, but I say 500. And you can see that grain's really coming through there, especially around these um, colored objects. So I'll go back out again. I like this. I don't think we need to do anything else to it. Uh, could perhaps put in a vignette I would only use a vignette to highlight that this might be a vintage lens. So I push that exposure down and we'll increase the size and reduce the feather. That just gives a more pronounced edge to it. You see the center's not affected, but the outside areas are. And that's really great. So again, click OK. Back into Capture One. And there it is there, and I will compare that to my original edit. You can see each image is good in its own way. Um, I do really like my original edit um, because I, I have a lot more control on how this sky looks. And even though you can see the sky there, um, I, just, I really like the texture there. But I really like what it's done with the windows here and these um, these coloured balls through here, that grain has really added something extra to it. If I zoom in on that on both of them, they're just too clean on my original edit. Whereas here, it, it looks like it belongs in the past. On this side, it just looks like I'm trying too hard. Now I would like to do something a little bit more vintage, like you found a photo in an old drawer somewhere. And I'm going to work on this street scene here. And as before, I will create a duplicate doing my clone variant and then reset that one. So we've got our original image here and we'll check the exposure. And you can see down the side here, there's a little bit of uh, overexposure. But looking at the, um, the values up here, it's only the red channel that's really clipping out. And so that can be adjusted um, in the next step. So we'll go edit with Dehancer. Okay, and again, it's gone into the previous settings and it's actually not too bad as a black and white image. 
but that's not what we're doing. We're going full vintage here. So we'll turn that clipping alert off, give it a full reset. We'll make this a color negative and we'll find something really quite vintage. I, I like what this Agfa color is doing actually. Um, I remember, you know, my dad used to shoot on Agfa color quite a lot. Just find one that's kind of got muted tones. I think this uh, Konica Impreza 50 has the right uh, tonal quality for me. Um, colors are still there, but everything's kind of softer and we can work on the exposure. I'll just give that a push out like so. So it has brought things back quite a long way, uh, just applying that film emulation. Again, we'll go through these basic steps. We'll go the expand and turn the clipping on. I'm not worried so much about the blacks at this point, but the white I'd like to push up further. There we go. So even though down on the histogram you can see the blues and the greens are, are still going over, the luma part of it isn't and the reds are, are quite well within range. And the black point, I'm actually going to bring the blacks up. That just gives it that sort of more vintage feel to it. I don't want to have really dark, rich blacks. That kind of goes against the feel that I'm after. And then just dropping into developer and pushing the contrast up a little bit. And then with the gamma, we'll just push that to a brighter sort of feel. There we go. I quite like that. And we'll just go back to the original. So you can see I've just softened the darker areas up and pulled the contrast back a bit. Remember, because the vintage photos, if they've been sitting in an old drawer or sort of hanging out on a, like a um, mantelpiece or something, it's gonna have that slightly faded look. And I'm not worried about the color head again, film grain, maybe just adds a slight touch to it. It doesn't have to be too much. Just drop into custom and zoom in there. And I would like to increase the resolution somewhat. Actually, no, I'd like to decrease the resolution, but also decrease the size. And turn that off. So again, that just softens the image up just a little bit more. Now, to give it that really vintage old look, we're gonna work on a bit of halation. Now, halation is similar to bloom, but where bloom works on the uh, diffusion of light from the lens, halation takes the, the bright light that's hit the plastic film layer and bounced back up into the darker uh, shades can really see that when you apply that. It's got this orange sort of glow to it rather than the white glow of bloom. Similar to the other tools, you do have different film sizes, but there's an added option in here, which is the Remjet. Now Remjet is a layer that is applied to physical film to decrease the amount of halation. So if we put that onto a no Remjet setting, you'll we'll watch this. And you can really see the glows around all of these bright areas. It's quite pronounced. And it does actually work with this, but I think it's probably a little bit too much. So let's stick with that setting, but drop into custom. And same with the bloom, we've got a mask mode so we can see just the extent of the halation.
That's really great. Now, we'll add some vignette. feather down that's uh, the vignette I'm happy with just a bit around the edges and then after that we'll add some film damage which is basically dust and scratches now you can see that that's quite a lot um, and if you hit the refresh button it will um, recalculate basically and put the dust and scratches in different areas. Now this one's set up for a half frame. So this is like your Pentax 17, where you've got that vertical um, half frame on a 35 millimeter. So what I'd like to do is go full frame, and that will spread it out a little bit more. Um, and then once we've got the kind of feel we're after, then we can go into custom, and adjust some more of the settings. So we've got the dust, the hairs, and the scratches. There we go. So I'll turn that off and on again. That's kind of the amount that you'd expect on your typical print or slide. And then, you know, like this uh, little piece here, because that's over someone's face, I'd rather move that around. Um, it does mean refreshing the entire tool set. And that's better. So it's not actually in the way of anything that looks like it might be some kind of point of interest. So it's not something bleedingly obvious to the eye, but when you look closer, you can see it. It is. It does have that old feel to it. And we'll finish with that one. This is the new one, and this is my edit. And you can see there's quite a difference. Uh, so let's zoom in on this dude. So he's not quite as bold and pronounced and uh, this uh, halation around here is actually really quite nice. Just gives it that really old feel. Um, and the lady with the umbrella, it's just got that uh, slightly dirty image kind of feel to it. Even without the dust and scratches, you can see the noise through here, the, the halation glow, it's just giving it something extra. And it doesn't take too long at all. Now I've transferred over this image to my phone. Here's Dehancer, we open up our image. It's just the same as the desktop version in that you've got all of the same film profiles. So I've chosen my preset and as with the other one, I could finish that up, export it and we're done. However, we can still, we can go into the edit and we've got very much the same sort of settings in here. Cool, and then we just save that. Save to gallery. And there it is, original and the altered. And then you can share that like uh, you would with everything else. The last image I wanna look at is uh, my little car over here. What if we go for one of the exotic film types? So Lomochrome, the amber type, it's way too dark. Uh, Lomochrome purple, or Metropolis, or the Prokudin Gorski. It's kind of got a nice feel to it. Let's just change that a little bit, giving it a little bit of contrast. So again, we'll go into the expand tool, set that black point to be quite rich and bring that white point in to give quite a bright look to it. And 
And yeah, this time I, I don't care about the, um, the clipping on the bottom end because I want it to be really dark in those areas. What I'd like to do is just bring those mid-tones up a little bit. So I'll go into Film Developer. You need to hit the contrast boost for any of this to work. So push that out so the darks are even darker, but then bring the gamma correction up like so. And then we'll just bring that white point back just a little bit. But we'll have some fun here. So push that color boost up and color separation. No, I like that up there as it is. And then we'll go into our bloom. Just a nice soft glow. If we go 16 millimeter and have a look at that mask, what we'll do is we'll just amplify that a bucket load and push the impact up as well. There we go. So that's quite a difference. Uh, and if we diffuse that a bit more, that'll just spread that glow out a little bit. And a little bit of film damage. 120 type. Custom, I don't want scratches. And maybe just a few hairs. Just to give it a little bit of authenticity. So yeah, so there's one there, one there. It's nothing obvious until you start looking closely. And then what I want to do is make it look like it has been scanned from a piece of film. And that's where this overscan comes in. Our gate is the actual square there. And we've got a whole range of different ones, widescreen, whatever. Um, look, we're in 35 millimeter and my sensor was a 35 millimeter sensor. So that really works well for me. You do see when I turn this off, what they've done is just cropped completely. But what we can do is pull in this lens zoom to bring that image in. And we can even push the scale of the gate out because we don't need to see the whole thing, do we? There we go. And the lens zoom is a good way to crop it as well. Offset that across. Perfect. So we've got this uh, nice edge. You can see the side of the film. We'll change that to a uh, positive. So we've got uh, white holes instead of black. And that's it. That looks kind of cool. Now the main problem I see with the overscan is that it, the orientation is all wrong. This seems to have been set up for um, movies, for cinema, whereas what we're working with is a roll of film that goes from left to right. This might work for a medium format style film which rolls from the top to the bottom, but in this instance, I'd love to see these go along the top and bottom. And if you were to change that film orientation to horizontal, what's what happens? It's just not right. Like, and then the, the, the holes are along the top and the bottom, but this is the wrong shape. What I'd like to see is the film orientation change, but also allow this same ratio. So it's a horizontal image, but the film strip goes from left to right this really should be looking at the way film works in a, a stills camera. We click OK. And drop back in. And so there it is. That's my finished image. Take the exposure warning off. And compare that to my original edit. The images are quite similar. The color is very different. Um, which is obviously the, the film emulation itself. But interestingly, the colors in the background are still quite good. It still looks very gold 
in relation to the rest of the image. I actually really like this film style. As you've seen, the bones of Dehancer are solid and produce really great results, but it's not without its shortcomings. Now I've got quite a list of improvements and you'll forgive me if I don't look straight at you, but I'm going to have to read these off a list. Things I'd like to see improvements on include reordering the adjustments, finer controls for the adjustments. I don't like punching in numbers. I would love to see some controls more analogous to the development process. Like what if you change the temperature in the developer? Those have real world effects on real film. And I would love to see that emulated in software. Keystrokes are not always standard. And by that, I mean a simple undo on a Mac is Command Z and on a PC, it's Control Z. On Dehancer Pro, it's just Z. And that works across all of their hotkeys. There is nothing OS standard in there. And I would love to be able to go into a menu to choose some of these adjustments. Adjustments could also benefit from tool tips rather than having to jump into the guide to check out what each tool does. And speaking of the guide, I strongly recommend you read it. Not only does it tell you what each tool and each adjustment does, but it also says why. And that is really important, especially when trying to understand film. I would love to see the tools on the right hand side separated into different stages of the process, such as in camera, develop and print, as each of these steps have their own effects. And finally, once you save changes, that's it, they are baked into the file. I would dearly love to be able to go back and alter some of those adjustments in the future. And this just isn't possible because the only way that you can save this image is in the format that it was presented. And I guess further to that idea, if Dehancer Pro was a true standalone app, then it could have its own file format, which means that I could go back and make adjustments whenever I felt like it. And I guess finally, there is the price. And I've got to say, when I first saw the price, 449 US dollars for the lifetime license, I was a little bit taken aback. But when you put it into perspective of the numbers of rolls of film that you might purchase, if you were to shoot a roll of film every two weeks, then you could effectively justify purchasing this product by not buying film for six months. So would I use Dehancer Pro again? Yes, absolutely I would. It has some really nice features that I know I would use in future products. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Is it something that you'd be interested in using? Is the price too high? Do some of the tools do the things that you think they should do? Or are there any additions that you think should be included with a future version of Dehancer Pro? I know they're listening and I know they're going to read the comments. And even if they don't, I will be telling them what needs to be done. Oh, and remember, if you are looking at purchasing Dehancer Pro, don't forget to use my code Pete Mellows for 10% off your subscription or lifetime license. And by doing so, not only do you save yourself some money, but you're helping my channel as well. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you on the next one.